There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it far. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this beautiful, precious day that you give us again to glorify you. Lord, each and every day is a day that we should rejoice in, in your love, your grace, your mercy, and your hope, your understanding. Just you being there, Lord, is so sufficient to every need that we could ever even think of or wish or want. I think we don't need it sometimes. But the blessings just keep rolling, Lord, out of your mouth, from your hand. And thank you, Lord, for walking to us each and every day instead of away. As we praise your holy name. Now thank you for this mm, understanding that you give us each and every day. In Jesus Christ, I pray, amen. This morning my passage is come out of John. And it's uh, right before Jesus went away to you know, be with his, his father. And he was talking to his disciples. I'm going to start out over here in uh, chapter 16 of John. And Lord, there's so much that I want to read, but i got to slow down and let him tell me what to read. Amen? All right. Verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I not go away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he come, he will, will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Howbeit, when the whole, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear. He shall he speak, and he shall show you things to come. Lord, I don't want to stop reading. Because all of this is coming together right before the disciples' eyes, telling them that Jesus Christ is going to leave and, and leave something here for them to rely on the same as him. Amen. And you know, I want to stop for a minute before I go on. And the disciples sitting around Jesus Christ as he was speaking, and he was telling them things to come. He was telling him about him and his father. He, telling them all, all these things that Jesus wanted to get off of his, off of his heart and lay it on, hit on his disciples. But I picture in my mind some of them picking their fingers or some of them looking around at, at Sister Sue over there. Oh, she got her hair fixed nice today. Were they truly listening to what God was saying in the message. Did they truly listen to Jesus Christ and the teachings that he was put before them? Or did they have their mind on something else? Now I know we can have a two-track mind. We, uh, some of us do anyway. Amen. I think women's got more than that. But anyhow, I'm not getting into that today. But, but people... I've thought about, you know, at times I'd look around the congregation and see who was listening to the preacher and who wasn't. And I'd hear candy paper opening up, you know, opening up a piece of candy and then make a loud noise in that desolate church because nobody was talking and only the preacher was and it was quiet in there. But so many things going on is what I'm saying here. And a lot of people, including the disciples, were not listening to what Jesus said. Truly listening. Now I know some things that we listen to sometimes is so exciting and some of them are not. 
I know the preacher can be so drab sometimes, but we have to decipher whether it's God talking or the preacher, amen? Well, what I'm trying to get at this morning, it says of sin because they not believe on me, Jesus Christ. If we don't have our undivided attention on God, on Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit, is that a form of unbelief? Are we thinking about 97 different other things instead of God and what He can do in our life? Okay. What we need to do is what Jesus Christ is telling His disciples right here. We need to listen and learn. We need to have God. We need to have Jesus Christ on our mind 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. I don't care what you're going through or what you're doing. They, were they all listening? Were they all taking notes? Were they all saying, okay, Jesus Christ is telling me the truth and I know the things to come? Or were they all twiddling their thumbs and saying, this sucker here is crazy. You know what I mean? We don't know what was going through their minds. We don't know what go, what go through Christians' minds here today. I mean, Jesus Christ is laying out a recipe. He was laying out everything, the things to come. I mean, he was laying out, there wasn't no mystery in this here passage right here. He was telling them how Things were going to unfold. Where it, where. Of sin because they did not believe on me. Of sin. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. I mean, that's three categories, three things, three sentences, three verses right there that we should take a hope and hang on to the rest of our lives and understand what it's saying. And belief comes in many different forms, people. I can believe in Jesus Christ all day long, but do I believe that He was going to protect me and take care of me and, and set me free and be with me the rest of my life? If we don't believe in any form or fashion, that's a sin. So when I become greedy, when I become uh, polarized to a certain thing, when I start saying in my mind, in my heart, in my spirit, is Jesus Christ really going to do this for me? Then I go to question, is that my Father's will? Did I listen to what God had in store for me when I went to church Sunday? Did I... believe in the things that he was going to do me the next week when I was by myself when I was alone or whether I was with somebody am I going to speak the words that he just said am I going to believe that he has given me the words to say to talk to somebody else am I going to be at the right place at the right time to honor and glorify him and to lift his name up above all names there's so many things that we have to look to in that sentence right there. Of sin because they believe not on me. When the disciples were not listening to him, when they were not focusing their whole full attention on him and taking advice from him and understanding him, I mean seeing him face to face, did they all take notes in their mind? Or did they just hear some of it? That's a sin, people. That's a sin. Because unbelief, unbelief, the Bible says, comes from not hearing God's Word. I mean, it's a sticky situation here. We have to look at this and find out truly what sin is. Sin is not honoring God. Seeing is saying that you don't believe in Jesus Christ, the Holy One. 
And when I go against his grain, when I go against him, when I think I can do something better than him, that's a sin. When I don't honor him, that's a sin. When I don't worship him, that's a sin. And when I see people worshiping and I go into the mix with negativity, that's a sin. Because the Bible says, do not quench the Holy Spirit. Do not quench it. Revive it. So I'm asking here today, including myself, am I doing what I visualize that the disciples may be doing at that time period? Because they were human. They were flesh just like us people. Their mind was wondering. I know when Jesus Christ was talking. I mean the ooh and all ah when they seen him and know who he is and believed on him and worshipped him. But when he started speaking, when he got up before the congregation, so to speak, were the people listening? Or the Lord, I'd stay home and think about things instead of going to church and think about things. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying here? Have your mind divided, not divided. Have it equally yoked with your brothers and sisters and listening to what God is saying to you. If you feel God's not talking to you in this specific church, find you another. If you think you can go home and sit in your easy chair and have just as much church as you're having at the church, so be it. Ever what God is leading you to do, you do it. Don't stop and think. Because each and every time when we stop and go to thinking about something, here comes the old devil. That first thought, I always have said this, and I go to my grave believing this, that first thought is from God. And the second one is from the devil. Because we have good in us through him. We have righteousness through him. That first thought, as a Christian is what I'm saying. Let me clarify that before I go any further. The first thought in your mind as a Christian, as a God-fearing person, as a God disciple, that first thought, go with it. You know what that burning bush, old Moses standing up there, and God told him, go free my people, and so speak. God, uh, Moses heard the word and he thought it was good but the second thought come in and said God I don't know if I can do that where'd that thought come from I don't know if I can split that red sea I don't know if I can do I don't even know if I can talk to Pharaoh I'm a stutter I stutter I, I can't talk how can I talk to Pharaoh when he should have I do it God you're going to give me the strength and I'm going to do it. Without faltering, without thinking, without anything coming in between you and God, him and God, do it. Of sin because they not believe on me. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, amen, was here before, here now, here after, Always. And you can't go to the Father without the Son, people. There's no possible way. The Bible says it. I believe it. So when you leave Jesus Christ out of the picture, you're not honoring God because of sin. Right there? That I should need to be plastered on everybody's mind, in everybody's heart, in everybody's love, grace, hope, and mercy of sin how can I worship God don't sin how can I honor God don't sin what is a sin well I want to tell you what you ain't got to read it you ain't got to hear somebody say it you know when you're sinning or not 
You know when you're going against God or not. It's in our being to know that. It's, he instilled us as birth, at birth, the good and the bad, the righteous and the not. He instilled that in us. Because he made us in the likeness of him, people. But we tarnish that. Through the years, a lot of us has, including myself, tarnished that. Wanted to add a little something else to it to kind of dilute it down, you know what I mean? That way I can do my own life and not think about it as often. And so to speak, I have to. When the Bible says every breath that comes out of your mouth, praise God. Every thought that enters your mind have God in it. Are we doing that today as Christian folks? Are we understanding what he's saying when he speaks? Do we know exactly what he's saying when he speaks? And if we have a relationship with him as our father, as our daddy, as the one that can ever help us, we know what he's saying Amen. when he speaks. I get so sick and tired of people saying, I don't understand what God's telling me to do. How are you doing that? I don't understand what God's telling me to do. Or I'll go pray about it. You know in your heart, guess what he told you. And you know in your heart you're equipped to do it. And you know in your heart that he's got it figured out. And here I am trying to figure it out. What? And you say, and you think, that you are just a perfect Christian? I mean, I tell my granddaughter, go out there and feed the chicken. I should have enough faith in her that she'll go out there and she'll feed the chicken. And she's seen me do it so many times. Amen? Now, I'm not saying sometimes she's going to get sidetracked just like you and I. But when, we go, when she goes out there, she's going to do what she wants to do or she's going to do what I told her to do. That is a big hill to climb as Christians. Do we tell or do we know or do we do what God wants us to do? Or do we question it? If we think about it the second time, we, we're questioning what God just told you to do. There's no way around it. There's no way around it. And He'll equip you to do it. And he'll show you how to do it. And he'll make you understand immediately when the words come out of his mouth. If we are close enough to him and understand his will, understand his plan, and understand him. The disciples listening to him right here, you know they didn't have a clue about what he's talking about. This man's going to leave. He's going to die on the cross. And he's going to leave and go to the Father and leave a comforter down here in my heart as the Holy Spirit. How could they believe that? How can you and I believe that? Faith. Love. And hope. What else? I asked you a question this morning. I asked myself a question. What else do we have to rely on? Ourselves? Somebody else? Money, material things. Let me tell you what. All my life I wanted a tractor. When I was growing up, I told my daddy, I'm going to have me a big old farm with a tractor. And he laughed at me. Well, I grew up. And I drove everybody else's tractor instead of myself, instead of my own. I was always somebody else's tractor I'm climbing on that day. 
and there was an old 856 that I cultivated with, old International. I loved that tractor, and I called it my own. I got, I had possession over that tractor, I thought. Well, all of a sudden, one day, we stopped at the John Deere store, and we went in there, and my wife said, let me buy you a tractor. Big old crocodile tears went blowing down my face, you know. We signed the papers, we got approved, and I drove, went along with it. I had that tractor. And I was very possessive of that tractor. I would look at it all the time to see if anybody took me with this or took me with that. Or, or did they even look at it? <laughs> I mean, it, it was tough there for a while. Because I was so possessive of something that I longed for all my life. All of a sudden, one day, God spoke to me. He said, oh, that ain't your tractor, that's mine. I said, sir, yours? He said, where do you think the resources come from to buy that tractor? Where do you think the goodness in my heart seemed fit for you to have one? Now I'm specifying this morning a tractor. But I want us this morning to think about each and every possession that you have and single out the ones that will rust and melt away and the ones that will be with you forever. And it will shed a whole new light on the possessiveness that we have. Amen? If we focus on what we have and what God has, it don't even, it's not even a comparison, people. Because what you have and what I have is his anyway. It's his. And he will step back and let you fall. He will step step back and let something of your prized possession go to dust. To show you his lesson, show us a lesson, amen. And we will let, learn from that mistake that we made if we will only listen to him. Verse 14 says, He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. See, all things that the Father has are mine. <laughs> Therefore, I, that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. Big circle there. God's, mine, yours, God's. It starts with God, it ends with God. Amen. Come on now. He shall glorify me. We shall glorify him. Not of sin. We can't glorify him with sin. But we can in righteousness because I go... Oh, let's see here now. Just right here, verse 12. I have yet many things to say unto you, but yet you cannot bear them now. Okay, I just said a while ago, everything God tells you, you can understand. Right? Jesus is saying that I'm going to tell you, but you can't bear it. You can't bear what I'm saying. You, can't, you can understand it, but can you do it? Can you fulfill it? Do you know how to do it? Do you know how to understand it? Amen. I'll show you many things, but you can't. In the future, if I knew what was going to happen tomorrow, I'd be worried to death today about tomorrow and the next day and the next day. Amen. How can we... Go through this life worshiping, glorifying God, word back tomorrow. And we don't even know it, but we still worry. Still worry. About what? Might as well be not worried about nothing because you don't got no control over nothing. No way. You're going to wake up in a new day in the morning. And whether you're going to be here or there. Amen. The disciples 
needed to hear and understand everything Jesus Christ was saying that specific day. And they would have no questions. You read John. Verse, what was that, 16? Ain't that what I see? Read that chapter. Read that chapter. It breaks it down into first grader material. It breaks it down to where you and I can understand what Jesus is saying at that specific time. And we can do the same thing right now. If we keep our mind focused on Him. Amen. He will show you what to do. He will, he'll tell you. Don't never say. Don't never say. I don't know what God wants me to do. That's a sin. That's a sin. If you have a relationship with God. If you know God personally, if you hear Him speak, if you know He is closer to you than a brother or a father or a mother, you have no excuse at all to say, I don't understand. Tell him lying. So think about it the next time you say it. Think about it the next time. I don't know what He wants me to do. Are you kidding me? What was the last thought come in your mind that was good? That's what he wants you to do. The last thought that comes in your mind that's good, that's peace, that's love, that's hope. Wow, God's talking to me. I hear all those things in the words that I'm hearing. That's God. So stop asking is God talking to me? Is God really saying that to me? Is, is, is questioning God. That Red Sea would, never would have been parted if old Moses would have bucked up and said, God, <laughs> I'm not equipped to do this. God, is that really you telling me to lift this staff up? Can you imagine how many people would have died? Is that really you? Let me think about this situation before I raise this staff up. Let me figure out, am I doing the right thing? Let me figure out if I, it's a piece of wood that I'm holding, is that going to save these people? And all I got to do is lift it up? God, I ain't got to stick whittled out enough perfectly for you to lift up unto you. I have to go home and make it better. You understand what I'm saying here this morning? What goes through, what went those through those disciples' minds, we don't have a clue. But as fleshly people, we do. Because we are them this morning. We are the same people that them disciples were of long ago. Yeah, but it's a little bit harder for us because we can't see Jesus Christ. All we can do is have faith and feel him. Ain't that enough? The Bible says that I believe it. Amen. Jesus Christ said it. I believe it. No questions asked. Do I still question God at times? I'm guilty. And I've missed on many of blessings by doing it. But I've got so many when I did. On just just understanding him. Understand. My ways are not His ways, people. But when I get in the Spirit, my ways are His ways. You ever thought about that? When you in the Spirit, when you get guffed and believe it wholeheartedly, you are in God, and God is in you. And everything is good. And we don't have to stop nothing. Because God has already stopped it. We don't have to start nothing. Because God throwed the stars in the sky, people. It would you, wouldn't I? But with this understanding that we have of that passage, Jesus talking to them, disciples, we can learn so much. And I tell you what, this week, I'm going to make it a point. 
I'm going to read that chapter over and over and over this week. Not because I can't understand it, but because I feel I'm being reverent to God. I kneel by my bed every night and pray to Him. And that's just my way of being reverent to God. So the next time we see somebody in their own way being reverent to God, who are we to judge them? I ask you that question. And I'm going to lay it out like the cow eat the cabbage because I don't this morning. But my grandson come in his house the other day. I don't know what's in his mind. I don't know who, who I don't even really know him a whole lot anymore. You know how grand you know how young people are. They'll run, run, or they'll come back, or they we or they're not. You know, it's on and just just every day is a different day, in other words. Then all of a sudden one day they wake up and they want to look. <laughs> they want to be around. Kind of like I did right before my daddy died. Well, what I'm saying here this morning, I could feel God's presence on that boy. That's funny. But when he looked at me, I could feel God's presence in him, presence in him. And I don't have a clue about him. I didn't have a clue what he was thinking that day. You see where I'm coming from? Jesus knew exactly what every disciple was thinking when he was speaking. How did he know that? Well, because he was God. Well, let me tell you what. God instilled that in us to believe that, to understand that, to know that. And if you would just stop, as I have to do so many times, just stop in my tracks and don't listen to my thoughts, but listen to his. And he will give you what you need in order to what you're around. What you're around. The experience that you go through each and every day. Come on then. Well, my grandson, he sees just like I do. He knows there's a God just like I do. But it's his. <laughs> He's the one that's got to get, get with God and get to heaven, not me. I can't get him there. I can't. The only way I can tell you how to get him there is believe in Jesus Christ. That's the only way I can. So let's stop on that little bit here. That, that last thing that I talked about of sin. Kind of dwell on that if you, got, if you, if you can throughout the day. Just to wail on that. <clears throat> what is a sin? How can I overcome it? And you already know that answer. I don't even have to say it. So if you don't have Jesus Christ living in your heart, please do. Please do. Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.